G'day, my name is Chris Mouflard and I'm a project engineer at Vico Software. Welcome to the Schedule Planner video training series level 7. We're going to review resource and material histograms. In this vignette we're going to discuss the power behind resource and material histograms as well as show you how to access and populate them in Vico Schedule Planner. We're also going to discuss the difference between current, target and forecast data. When we are creating histograms, we have a few options. The first is the target view, which enables the planned schedule we are targeting to be presented. We then have the current view, which is a reflection of the current plan and includes all the detailed tasks. We'll learn more about those in the production control vignette series. And finally, we have the forecast, which takes into account all the actualized data and generates a comparative model that we can track against. With Vico Schedule Planner open, let's navigate to our side navigation bar to the resource and materials histogram view. When we first open this view, it will open with no content within it. It's important that we first define the settings. We must first click on the settings button. We can start by selecting a new filter. In this example, we're going to create an all tasks filter. In this histogram, we're going to use resources as our filter, and knowing that resources are measured in hours, we'll select that rate of unit. We will then need to select an empty cost type to ensure that the data filters correctly. And as we want to see all tasks, we're going to need to select all the suppliers. Click Next. In this view, we can now select the different labor components that we wish to add to our histogram. Because we want to see everything, We'll just select all. In the final screen, we will now need to select the data that will be filtered in this view. Because we have not yet entered any actuals, we will not need to show the forecast. And because we have yet to baseline the schedule, we will not need to show the current. The target will be sufficient in displaying the information needed to assess the schedule at this stage. We can also edit the bar width or how the information is displayed in days, weeks, or months. Let's keep it in weeks. The information that has been now presented in the resource histogram gives us an overview of the number of hours by week will need to be spent to complete the schedule on time. The histogram bar on the left indicates the number of hours by week that need to be completed for each of the resource amounts, where the bar on the right indicates the total number of hours. The purple line that flows through the middle of the resource histogram indicates the cumulative number of hours that would be required to complete this activity. Let's look at another example. Let's start by creating a new filter. We'll call this the concrete filter and we'll change the units to cubic yards and then now we can filter this view to show the quantity and resources. Again we'll first need to select the cost type as empty and we'll need to select the concrete subcontractor as the supplier. In the next view we can now select all the different concrete types that we wish to display in this filter. Again because we're not showing the current or the forecast views we can uncheck these at this time. If we want to, we can also edit the color and the graph line that exists. Let's use a nice bright red. In this example, we'll change our bar width to days to give it a little bit more clarity in exactly the number of hours by day that we wish to present. In this example, we've now shown the, all the quantity types that will need to be completed in cubic yards by day for all the concrete tasks in this schedule. If we wanted to only analyze the slab on grade activities, we could do this by selecting the custom view that we've created earlier. In this vignette, we've learned that resource histograms allow us to use historical actualized data to trend resource quantities, resource hours, and quantities and costs into the future. This allows us to determine the potential risks of resource or quantity overage or underage.